Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. NFL stars Travis and Jason Kelsey can add Billboard chart topper to their resumes. Billboard says Fairy Tale of Philadelphia is number one in both rock digital song sales and holiday digital song sales. The song is a duet between the two brothers. It's featured on the Philadelphia Eagles charity album. All they need now is to get Taylor Swift on board for a collaboration. Entrepreneur Mark Cuban is leaving Shark Tank and selling his stake in the Dallas Mavericks. The billionaire says the 16th season will be his last on Shark Tank. Cuban says he wants to have a couple of summers with his teens before they enter adulthood. Cuban says the fellow sharks will survive fine without him. Cuban is reportedly selling his stake in the Mavs for $3.5 billion. Kiana Key is a recording artist who is proudly queer. The Latvian-born, London-raised singer is out with new music celebrating her identity, but she says the industry doesn't always fully support queer artists. It's in New York, and when I started my um, solo career, my team was actually divided in half. Some of them were like, okay, yes, you should be yourself. Let's shoot lesbian music video. Let's do anything you want. And the other half was like, but you are limiting yourself like some people will not accept you you're gonna hit the walls like maybe you should you should not start with that maybe later in your career you can be yourself but let's start with something mellow and i thought about this as like but who cares when i was talking to myself like who cares if you don't like me you don't have to like me who are we doing this for at least at first we need to actually decide who are we doing this for i'm doing it First of all, for myself, I write my own song, my own songs. I put it out to the world for the people who will actually like them, who will relate to them, who might get something out of that, you know, maybe. Key's newest music video, Numb, features an all lesbian cast and is a message to fans that pain is only temporary. Edward Scissorhands taught us that it's okay to be who you are. Now, decades later, Edward's story is being retold with music and a non-binary protagonist at its center. Scissorhands, a musical tribute from Bradley Bredewig, one of the creators of the groundbreaking queer series The Fosters and Good Trouble, is getting a refreshing take on the 90s classic. A bit about your kind of relationship with Edward Scissorhands, the Tim Burton movie, and why you thought that it was really ripe for a kind of leaning into the story of the other, essentially the Frankenstein story. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, I grew up loving all things Spielberg and Zemeckis and Burton. And, you know, Scissorhands was one of my favorites because I could really connect to a movie um, about a central character that had been otherized or ostracized for being, you know, what others consider different in this middle class sort of white cookie cutter neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so um, as I started producing and writing and directing more and more theater in my spare time, I um, <laughs> wanted to do a holiday show. Um, and it always felt like, the movie always felt like a holiday movie to me, even though it's really not typically known as that. Right. So as I started to explore it, I started to ask myself, what does a more modern version of Scissor Hands look like? And, you know, very often, I think one of the biggest questions that we used to get on the Fosters actually, just to sort of split our time for a second, was how yeah. do women build a family? And mm -hmm. I always felt that the word build being used very often was interesting. Um, I mm -hmm. found it kind of strange and unique that that word was used. And for whatever reason, I took that question and that word build and I applied it to our musical because mm -hmm. that's really what we're doing. We're, we're you know, we're a tribute musical, we're one part parody and one part tribute. And so I looked at the inventor in particular, the inventor character who's played, who is played by Vincent Price in the movie. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I wanted to make our inventor um, a woman, a really strong woman at the center of our, of our, of our show who always wanted to have a child. But like we say in our version, her body just wouldn't allow her to have a child. So she decides to build a child mm -hmm. of her own. And it's out of, you know, various different things and objects. And so it's a child built from love. Um, as the inventor says, a child built with her own two hands. 
And I wanted that child to represent, you know, many things um, within our society that is still considered other by most, mm -hmm. particularly non-binary. Um, yeah. I want to explore scissor hands that was, you know, pure of heart and soul and didn't attach themselves to the binary. They just know how to express what they feel and, and what they want by speaking their truth kind of, kind of always. And so, yeah. as you probably know, I can't help myself. I tend, I tend to tell queer stories, yeah. um, which way that I can. I love thank the, God. Idea. <laughs> right? and thank God for you doing the same thing. Um, thank you. I love the idea of taking, you know, these classics that we grew up with, that I grew up with, and sort of turning them on their heads and exploring these kinds of queer love stories in this yeah. great, big, epic holiday musical. So yeah. that's really where it came from for me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for all that background, Bradley. I appreciate it. And and Dion, I, I wonder if you would talk a little bit about your memories of the movie Edward Scissorhands and what it was like for you to first become aware of this project and, uh, you know, have the inventor who was played by Vincent Price be this woman who's creating her own family and what your earliest reaction to that was as well. Um, to be honest, I, I saw Edward Scissorhands probably many years ago, like, you know, maybe in the background, uh, like it was a movie that Oh, okay, that's on. So let me watch it. <laughs> yeah, um, it was a, a wonderful movie. But I didn't go back when when Bradley presented me with the script and the concept. Uh, I read the script and I was so like, oh my god, this is so amazing. I never really correlated the movie uh, to ever being a non-binary that it could possibly be that mm -hmm. but when you when you see Bradley's script you go wow I can see how this all can relate and make sense and it's so perfect right now so when I looked at you know the script to me I, I, I decided not to go back and watch the movie I, re I just remembered you know wow I remember that so let me come back here and just read the script for myself, you know, how it relates to me. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this really, you know, is a black woman experience too. Um, as you know, black people have been going through the other experience <laughs> for many, many, many yeah. years. And the kind of LGBTQ, especially non-binary is newer in terms of, you know, people actually, you know, bringing attention to it and be, our, our awareness to it. And it's almost like uh, the black woman is there to soothe and to help comfort the journey that we've already been on. Yeah. Um, and, wow. uh, and it's so interesting to uh, have, you know, play a character that is helping someone who's going through the same thing yeah. that I've been going through. The Dude Still Abides. 250 items from the 1998 film The Big Lebowski are going up for auction. It's all to mark the movie's 25th anniversary. The t-shirt and bathrobe Jeff Bridges wore are up for auction, along with sunglasses and a bowling ball signed by the dude himself. The auction will take place in Beverly Hills and online December 16th. As for a sequel to the film, Bridges says he'd be open to a Lebowski part two. You can watch the Advocate Channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate Channel, I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thank you for watching.